Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and if you're new here, my name is Ubu Godswin. It's just super excited to be here guys and I have with me Farouk. Alright, so Farouk and I will be reacting to um, another recommended videos from one of my subscribers and it says the prophet on Judgment Day. So without wasting much of your time, let's get right into this. Wasallam said on the day of judgment you will reach a position of misery people will be miserable and people will some of them will be saddened people would have given up hope in some ways and then the Prophet wasallam said the long hadith the people will gather each other and they will begin to question what's going to happen to us and so they will remember the Prophets. Let's go to the Prophets. Let's ask them. Let's come to them and ask them to intercede for us so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can begin the judgment, the hisab, the accountability. Prophet said, in this life I had a dua. And this dua, I kept it. Whereas every other prophet was given their dua which they asked for. As for my dua which I kept specific for me, was that, Oh Allah, save my ummah on the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Behold, your Lord may raise you a beautiful raising on the day of judgment. What is that? It is the raising of the intercession. And this is the way it will go. He said, the people will go to Adam alayhi salam and they will say to him, Ya Adam, Anta Abu al-Bashar, you are the father of all mankind. You are our father. Allah created you with his hands. Please intercede for us on this day. And then Adam alayhi salam will say, Ilaykum anni, ilaykum anni. Go away from me. Please go away from me. Inni akhafu mithla alladhi takhafu. I fear the same thing you are fearing. Inni asaytu Rabbi. I disobeyed my Lord once. Inna Rabbi qad ghadiba ghadaban lam yaghdab mithlahu qat. Today my Lord is in a state of anger which he has never been angry like this before. Go to the one who is after me. So we go to Nuh alayhi salam. And we say, Ya Nuh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you. You are the second father of mankind. Intercede for us for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to begin the judgment. And then Nuh alayhi salam will say the same thing. Ilaykum anni, ilaykum anni. Go away from me, go away from me. I fear the same thing you are fearing. I made my dua upon my people. My Lord is angry in a state where he has never been angry like this before. Go to the one after me. Go to the one after me. So then we go to the next prophets. Till we reach Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Ibrahim alayhi salam on that day would also respond in the same way. Go to the one after me. We keep going from prophet to prophet. This is all the Muslims and all the disbelievers, everyone. So then we go finally to Musa alayhi salam. And Musa alayhi salam responds in the same way. He said, then we go to Isa alayhi salam. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, responds in the same way. And he adds, the people took me as a God. Therefore, today I am not qualified to face my Lord. How am I supposed to face him? I've got an answer to this. I've got something I have to answer to. The people took me as a God. Go to the one after me. I am not qualified for it. Lest Finally, we reached Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, this is what I have been favored with on that day. That I will be given an intercession for you people. And the only intercession I'll be given for is for my ummah, for only for my nation who followed me. As for the rest of the nations, they will have to go behind their prophets, behind their imams. And everyone else who was disbeliever will go behind whoever they used to follow. So whoever their authority was, the angels will say, go to whoever you used to follow. Our Rasul Sallallahu says, when the people come to me and they say, please, ishfa' lana, intercede for us for the judgment to begin. I will call out on that day and say, Ana laha, Ana laha. He says, Thumma asjudu li Rabbi sajda. 
I prostrate to my Lord, such a prostration, so prolonged. Only Allah knows how long, Masha Allah and Asjud, as long as Allah wills for me to make sujood. And I call out to Allah in such a dua that I've never called out before in my life. I've never used these words in praising Him and calling out to Him in my sujood. And then my Ummah who followed me, they will prostrate behind me. A caller will call out, prostrate down to your Lord. Allah says in the Quran, on that day, a saq will be revealed. What is this saq? What is the true nature of this saq? Allah only knows. In Muslim, the book of Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ says, My Lord reveals his saq. Only Allah knows the nature of this saq. There is nothing like unto him, and he hears all things and sees all things. So we will not dwell into the description of this reality called as saq The Muslims, the believers will see it, and then they will be called to prostrate. So then, bi'ithnillah, we prostrate. Except for the hypocrites. Allah says, فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ They will not be able to prostrate, and the disbelievers will not be able to prostrate. As for the Prophet and his ummah who are still prostrating, the hadith says, فِي ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ يَنزِلُ اللَّهِ On that day, Allah will descend. How will He descend? What does descending mean? Only Allah knows the nature of this descension. And Allah says, Actual fight, this is scary, you know. Very, very scary. Very scary because, like, this same message for God, you know, on that day, we won't even listen to the cry of the people. God will listen to billions of people. People pray to Him, mm. call upon Him, and He answers their prayer and never makes a mistake and looks out for His people, His creation, you know. And that day, He does want to listen. Want to, like, he does want to listen. Your grace period is finished and it's done. Yeah, when, even the prophets are scared. Yeah. The prophet Adam to Noah to Ibrahim to um, Yusuf to Yunus, all of them, they are all scared. They are scared on that day. So imagine we, Mark, and with the kind of, with the way the world is going Grinch. right now, we need to be self aware, we need to create that self awareness about um, loving God, trusting in Him, doing what He pleases, and not just doing things out of our own violation. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, cool. Yes, we just have to just. Fall in line, like exactly. follow the scriptures, follow the word of God, and to avoid this thing. See, when he would descend, only God knows, only God Himself knows how he is. When you say he would descend, knows what it means. You can imagine God descending in his person, mm. in his entity, in his being, in his supremacy. Mm. Oh, let's continue. And Allah says in the Quran, On that day, your Lord and his angels will come. The angels in line like soldiers. And Allah's throne will be brought. What does this throne look like? Only Allah knows. Mm -hmm. But it will be brought and there will be eight angels carrying Allah's throne. These angels, the description came in the hadith that they are so humongous that it will take 300 years journey for a person to reach between the shoulder and the earlobe. They look in that nature. What the earlobe looks like, Allah knows. What the shoulder looks like, Allah knows. But the point is these angels are humongous. Eight of them carrying Allah's throne. The Prophet ﷺ said, the sky, the worldly sky, this universe that we see, compared to the second sky, because there are seven skies Allah created, is like a ring thrown into the desert. And the second compared to the third is like a ring thrown into the desert. And the third compared to the th fourth is like a ring thrown into a desert and so on, until you reach the seventh. And the seventh compared to the Arsh, to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is like a drop, in one hadith, like a drop in the ocean. And there is Allah's kursi, which is above the throne. And the kursi encompasses the whole skies and the earth. It's even larger than the Arsh, than the throne. That will be brought on the Day of Judgment. And then Allah will say, Ya Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Irfa' ra'sak, lift your head, was'al tu'ata, and ask for anything, I will give you. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lifts his head, 
And the only thing he will say is, Ya Rabbi, Ummati, Ummati. Oh my Lord, save my nation, save my nation. The Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. And he will know them. Al Rasul ﷺ will know his Ummah which he interceded for. How will he know them? When the Prophet ﷺ was saying, oh, We are waiting for you at the Hawd, he said, Follow my Sunnah and stick to it. What I am on and my companions stick to it. And I will be waiting for you there. And I will call you and say, Come and drink from the fountain. Prophet said, You will drink from it. A drink that you will never, ever be thirsty after that again. Thirst as in the quenching of thirst which brings you to fatigue. That's the thirst we're talking about. You will never be thirsty like that ever again. And you will enjoy it. This fountain on the Day of Judgment, he says, it will be colored like milk. You'll say, this is like milk, but it's not like the milk of this earth. It will taste sweeter than honey, but not like the honey of this earth. And you will have cups of gold and silver. Some of the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, we ask Allah to let us drink from that. I mean, will drink by themselves. And some of them, the Prophet ﷺ, will give them to drink from his blessed hand. Before the Prophet ﷺ died, he went to his final visit to the grave of the Shuhada, of the martyrs, and to Al Baqiyah. And he made dua for them, and then he said the following words The only thing I will miss of not seeing is that I will die not seeing my brethren. And then Abu Hurairah said, Ya Rasulullah, awalasna nahnu bi ikhwanik. Are we not your brothers already? Look, we're here. You can see us. He said, Ya Abu Hurairah, you are my companions. Yes, and you are my brothers. But the brethren I'm talking about, they, don't, they are not here. They are the ones who believed in me and followed me, but never saw me, never met me. We ask Allah that we are them. Amen. He said, what will happen? He said, I'm going to meet them on the day of judgment and I will call them to drink from the fountain. He said, كيف تعرفهم ولم تروهم ولم تراهم? How will you know them and you have never seen them? He said, if I told you that a person had many horses and some of them were very black in color and among them there were horses that were striped with white on their faces and on their arms and on their legs and on their tails and he said, well, isn't he able to tell the difference between these horses and those? He said, yes, very easy. He said, on a day of judgment, my ummah will come to me, ghullan muhajjalin. They will come striped with nur, brightness, nur on their faces. This is what it meant. It means on their faces and on their arms and on their legs. How do I know this? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, وَذَلِكَ مِنْ أَثَرِ الْوُضُوءِ This is because the effect of the wudu they used to make. What does that mean? It means they used to pray. They used to prepare for prayer. They were purified by making wudu. Isbagh al wudu, he said. Isbagh al wudu. They used to not only make wudu, they used to make their wudu proper. So they would go a little bit beyond their knee, their elbows, a little bit beyond their ankles. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu said, After that day, everyone I saw, I used to say to them, Whoever wants to drink from the fountain of the Prophet, extend your wudu. Like, make it better. Make it better. Or do it like the way Bilal radiallahu used to make it. Before every prayer he used to make wudu, whether he still had it or didn't. There will be people whom the Prophet sallallahu when he intercedes for them, they will be turned away from the fountain. See, there will be angels standing there. And the people will rush to that fountain. They will see that this is salvation. So some of them will be prevented by the angels. And they will look like Prophet ﷺ will say, are they from my ummah? And some of them the Prophet ﷺ used to know from this life. And you'll say, they are from my ummah. And Allah will say to him, they changed after you. They changed after you. Meaning they changed your sunnah after you. The innovators, the ones who apostated, they changed. And the Prophet ﷺ will say, sorrowness and depth of hellfire for those who changed my sunnah after me, those who changed my way after me. My brothers and sisters, this is when 
At this point, this is when the sky above us will be filled with darkness. We look up and what do we see? We see our books, our records. Wow. Scary. Scary times ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't even know where to begin. I don't even know where to begin. This is this is massive. This is it's an eye opener. It's it's a way of recalling you back to the will of the Lord. Let's be self aware. Let's. Let's, I'm not saying we should leave worldly things, but then, how do I put this? Let's put God first. God first above everything. His teachings first. Even Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Wasallam, um, towards the latter end of the video, said sorrowness and the depth of hellfire for those who change these ways after him. Okay, so let me bring you up to speed. Sunnah, Sunnah is um, the ways of the Prophet, the teachings of the Prophet. Take for instance, let's see. Uh, in Islam, we have five compulsory prayers. And a prophet, after like a particular prayer, then might want to do another supplication. So that supplication, the prayer after the um, um, the compulsory prayer is the sunnah. Mm -hmm. So that is the sunnah, the, the teachings of the prophets, um, the way he does, the way he behaves is just the way of, it's just the sunnah. It's just like Jesus doing fasting and prayer and all that kind of stuff. So that's just it. Okay. Maybe God did not instruct. God has instructed us to do one thing, but then the aftermath of that thing, let's say the prophet might decide to want to do one or two things. So that's the sunnah. Okay, what the prophet did the, after yes. the original, the original thing that was said to be yeah, done. What God has told us to do one thing already. Mm -hmm. Now the prophet is doing something extra. Uh, something extra. Yeah. So that's sunnah. Okay. So that's what sunnah is. Okay. So. Here, the prophet is saying he recognizes some people from his ummah. Ummah is this community. Ummah is the community, the people that, that are supposedly following him or used to follow him, something like that, according to the story. And then some of them changed his ways. And he said, depth of hellfire for those who changed his ways. Let's just try to pass across the right message. A lot of people listen to what the apostles say, a lot of what the pastors say. Let's find out the truth for ourselves because I believe we have... We are sensible. God gave us um, a brain to be able to to think about things and and make right decisions. You just don't blindly follow your pastor, follow your imam, follow this, follow that. You on your own should be able to make research and then know what is right and what is wrong. So that's just one aspect of the video I was able to cover. Okay. So correctly what you said, um, you see right now in the way the world is going, people tend to do what they want to try exactly. to bring things to suit them they try to change a lot of things where really, like this is difficult exactly. this will not please the body this will not bring them pleasure we try to help people to switch it up and, and so yeah so that it to be beneficial it could fit their lifestyle and the rest of that yeah. forgetting that everything that was written down that was said or that was recorded down was for our own good you know and like it said like at the last day they shall be punished because even the Bible says we should not take out anything. God says we should not take out anything from His word. And that should be as exactly. anything. So if you on that, you keep we keep on changing things just to benefit us, just to suit our lifestyle, just to because we we want to be both in the world and also be in 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 God's line. So we try to merge the two of them together. So we'll, we'll be in the middle, for reason that we can't actually be on this fence. You see that we we'll go for one and live one. You can't eat your cake and yes, have it. Yes, exactly. So and that is why we should also learn to study for ourselves and find out the truth for ourselves, not just taking the words from our religious leaders the way they exactly. say it. You know, so it will really benefit and help us. I want to say a very big thank you guys for sticking with us on this one. It will come away next time. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. For now, we say.